Tell us, Benny, first year, 22 games, all Australian. It all sort of got rolling pretty quick. Yeah. Um, everything I wanted to do in footy um, was always geared towards the Adelaide Footy Club and, um, and I had confidence. I was young and I was skinny and I, I didn't know much about the game, but I had confidence that if I tried hard, I could do it. Um, really pleased at the time the Adelaide Footy Club was starting and... Um, Graham Corns coaching at the time was happy for young fellas to come in and play games and uh, it was actually funny watching the, the vision that game against the Bulldogs John, against John Ballantyne was my first game and um, I didn't know what I was really doing and I just tried um, and you keep trying and you try and um, it, was, it was surreal in, in essence. It was, uh, I come out of school and um, to be out of play one game was uh, beyond my wildest imagination but then to be able to back it up and keep going and then get an accolade at the end of the day which um, which doesn't that didn't really interest me as far as you don't aim for it but um, um, it was fantastic so I had a great start. Mods 92 signing the contract coming into the club how did that happen and did you have any feel at all that you were going to do a um, what you did in the air and then be able to kick as many as you kicked I mean it was just I think Macca, Bruce McAvaney said at one point, at your peak, you're bigger than Bradman in this town. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think back then as a kid, just coming from the bush, I enjoyed my footy that much. I just came down and, you know, was happy to get a gig anywhere. And I think um, earlier on, like you said, signing the new contract, I reckon I was with Benny. Um, we had to front up at a show somewhere and we had to... Um, wear these sunglasses, and I think the slogan was, our future show bright, we've got to wear shades. So <laughs> I'm thinking of this all it's all about. <laughs> like the ones that Goody had on in that photo before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. But um, pretty much after that photo shoot, I had uh, Bill Sanders basically call me over and bring me outside into the new Toyota Camry. And I thought, oh, geez, this is looking all right. I wonder if this is like a sign on for you or something. He had the contract out whacked it on the dash of the car and basically said, sign here. And I said, I didn't need any lawyers or agents back then. I was just happy to play footy for the LA Footy Club. I said, no worries at all, easy stuff. No car, just a signature. No car, would have been happy with a matchbox car. Doesn't matter, I just wanted to play for the LA Footy Club. When you started to get a roll on, and I mean, I was in 93, I was the first year out of uni, 94, five, we were going to the games whenever we could. We were going basically to see if you could do that, that you're seeing on the screen now, and you did it so regularly. That's me. <laughs> you were a mark of the year a few years later, but... I'll tell you what, Benny did a good hanger too. Did you, did, you, did you feel that people were coming to watch you? I mean, I know you're not allowed to say that, but you must have. Well, I guess, I guess to a point I did. I think 93 sort of set it off, that um, highlight there against North Melbourne in the goal square. Going back and kicking that goal and just seeing the grandstand erupt, it just made me want to probably, you know, keep trying it again. I know coaches probably... Say, so, you know, you don't have to jump for all of them, but, um, yeah, I sort of found different. I really... You took that mark <laughs> over... You took that over Glen Archer. That was mark of the year. Then you kicked your seventh straight after that. But then you won the mark of the year again and again and were nominated, I think, eight more times for mark of the year. Yeah, I did. Um, you know, winning, winning the cars was something different to me. I mean, everyone says, you know, you've won a car, and I think, oh, great, I'll get to keep it. But now, obviously... Um, the advice from Eddie, my accountant, obviously says, you know, it's not wise to keep that. You've got to pay half in tax, so. <laughs> which I think Toyota are happy with anyway because it was a Mitsubishi, so. <laughs> but no, that, that's a good accolades and everything else. But really, you know, I enjoyed my footy and taking the hangar here, there and everywhere. That's, that's what it was about for me too. And I just, I just love loved playing footy and, um, you know, the supporters um, come along through the gates to watch that sort of thing. Fantastic. Benny, take us to 97, 98. Back-to-back -back flags, five years in, six years in. Yeah, be before I do go to that, though, um, the legend still lives, too, with Tony. Um, um, I show vision of Tony to the Collingwood players, and when they ask me who is the hardest player he played on, um, and I played on him at training. <laughs> and I kept it to two goals one day as well, which is a good one. Um, but um, the legend still lives, and they love him. They still call him Godra as well. So, um, But back to 97, 98... Um, Thanks, mate. I'll tell you what, Benny, I, I, I really did love playing on you and those one-on-one -on -one um, uh, like one -on -one, um, <coughs> training sessions because I thought, well, I really want the best, best fullback on me and Benny was definitely it and he helped me out a lot of times. He probably doesn't know this now because when we used to have the big um, goal hit-outs and everything, you get, when we were up against Plugger and Ablett and that sort of thing, 
one way I could beat them by kicking more goals than have this guy stand at them. So fantastic, Benny. Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, same, same. When you, <laughs> when you, uh, when you train with the best, and yeah, they they help you uh, be able to beat the best. So uh, um, I, I used to love training with Tony. Um, yeah, 97, 98, um, unbelievable years. Um, and they happened so quickly uh, to a certain degree. 93 sort of happened in a blur and we're in a prelim and we probably should have won, um, but we didn't. Um, but then 97, 98 come around and it was, um, it was something, I, I think Bill or, or Bob was mentioning it earlier, that we were, probably weren't the best side for the whole year, but coming into finals in both of those years, we were fit, um, ready to go and... Um, and just, just rearing, you know, we're playing really good footy. So, happened in a blur, um, such a, a big moment um, for the footy club, but also just in your life as a person to run out in the MCG um, and take it all in um, was huge and to get a result was great. You would have dreamt about winning a grand final at the MCG. Was the reality more vivid, more brilliant than the dream itself? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was huge. Um, you do. You dream about it. You, you don't know what it will feel like. You can assume what it feels like. But once you get out there and you're actually in it and you get yourself in a position to win on the back of what you've done for the, the 12 months or for a lot of us, you know, 10 years prior, um, it, it's amazing. Uh, it was a mixture of emotions. There was elation. There was relief. There was excitement. There was the whole lot. And you, you hear it every year when they win it. But it's so true. Um, it, it's, it's a memory that will last with me forever. Mods, when you look back at all your aerial work, is there one mark that you would rate the best of all? I don't know. I, uh, in, in, you know, um, Brisbane, Brisbane wasn't too bad a mark at the time, <laughs> up at the Gabba, I guess, but um, I think it based back to what I said before, the first time I really realised that the crowd are in there and wanted, wanted to watch you take hangers was the North Melbourne game, when they all just stood up. I just, you know, I, I, I was nearly in tears like a and now I'm a bit of a sook, so... <laughs> well, I had to go back and, you know, when you take those sort of marks, you need to kick the goal, and, like, I was trying to rub the tears from my eyes, trying to concentrate on the goal because of the crowd we just did. So, no, it's fantastic. You talked about uh, being a has-been. You told me a story as we were having a drink beforehand about being in a dump in Perth years ago. Oh, <laughs> well, funnily enough, when I was over in Perth still playing, I um, went, went to the dump with my wife one day to drop some stuff off, and... In the corner of my eye, I saw a big post and there was Tony McGuinness there. And um, I sat there and I went, oh, you know you passed it when you sort of, when you sort of see that sitting in there in the dump or whatever else. And Mrs. Yeah. sort of laughed. And then, um, funnily enough, I think about five years later, I'm down at Victor Harbour, <laughs> going to the dump and there it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at the wife and yeah, she didn't need to say anything. <laughs> so it was all good fun. Benny Mark of the Year, 96 versus the Saints. Just incredible, really. That you, four marks of the year between the two of you. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, that was a, a part of the game that everyone loved to watch, and it's starting to come back in the game now. But, um, yeah, I, I always thought the way I played my footy and the coaches spoke to me about is if you think you can mark it, go and mark it. Um, if you can't and you drop it, then you'll be in strife. But if you think you can have a crack, have a crack. And I was lucky enough to be in the right time, um, right place at the right time with that one. But... Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of fun. Playing footy was just a lot of fun and still remains a lot of fun watching it. Last question for both of you. Answer it uh, however you like, but if I said you could go back to your favourite moment that you ever had at the Adelaide Football Club, where would you be? Um, I'll go first. You go first. All right. Um, mine, I, mine, I dare say, because normally your best moment at the pubs is when you win, but... Fortunately for mine, it was probably the 93 prelim because I thought we could have won it and we didn't, which probably made me more hungry to try and win another one. So for me, I think it was the 93 prelim getting so close, but not getting it was the incentive to try and do it. Is that your son? He hasn't got a set of drums at home, so... <laughs> Someone's taught him that. I don't know <laughs> who. <laughs> that is brilliant. 93 prelim. This is the wind-up, like the Academy Awards. Last question. Um, I've, got, I've got so many, but um, <laughs> first game, huge, unbelievable for me as a young kid. The premiership's huge, but then there's also another one, before, I think it was the 97, before the 97 premiership um, or grand final, it might have been 98. 
myself, Andrew McLeod, Tyson Edwards, uh, there may have been another, in the, in the corridors of the hotel, prior the night before the game, playing indoor cricket um, and sweating our bums off, trying to smack four runs and take hang and hitting walls, hitting things. It got to about 11, 11.30, the boys might be able to tell you later. 11 or 11.30 and you think, holy, I'm sweating my arms, I've got to play a grand final tomorrow, we should go to bed. And we all just sort of dropped everything and went to bed straight away. That, that rings in my head all the time. But the silly things you get up to as footballers, but, um, but uh, all great moments. One of the great fullbacks, one of the great full forwards. The third and fourth inductees. Well done, Ben. Mods.